Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. Uh, today, we are going to wrap up the neonatal resuscitation section here of this EMS Quick Study Tips. And this is part three. Going to talk about preterm delivery in infants and resuscitation and what's most important for you to know for these patients and also for when you're looking to take exams and stuff you have to kind of remember, right? So I always, of course, start these out by reminding you why this is important, okay? Yeah, these are short videos and they're made for you to give you that key content, that key information to help you pass exams, but they're not just for exams, okay? They're also to build your knowledge base, to kind of get you looking into this content more if you don't understand it, if you're not sure about what I'm talking about, to get you to open up that textbook, do some research online, and really kind of hammer home the key content by delving deeper into it, okay? This is going to help you do what? It can help you make better clinical decisions. It's going to help you do your reports much better and also going to make you much better at interacting with other healthcare professionals like doctors and nurses and stuff, right? So it all kind of ties in together. But so it's not just for example, and while that is the goal, right, is to give you that key content of stuff you're going to see on exams, that's not just what it's for, okay? It's for much more, uh, much more than that, all right? So keep that in mind as you watch these, these EMS quick study videos here. All right, so I'm going to talk about, um, again, neonatal resuscitation, talk about preterm infant guys. You know, when you get these babies that are born early, um, they have less surfacant going on, right? And this sort of reduces that surface tension of fluid that's, that's in the lungs, okay? It makes that diffusion of oxygen and CO2 much more efficient, okay? So when they don't have it, it's less efficient, right? So when they don't have it, what happens? The newborns are unable to keep their lungs inflated, and then that becomes a problem with what you see a lot of preterm infants on ventilators, they're on respirators, right? They're on PEEP to keep that their lungs inflated, okay? Also, you see them, they're going to have less fat, right? They're going to have translucent skin. The cartilage is going to be soft. Often, they'll have absent reflexes. They can't cough. They can't uh, suck or swallow or gag, okay? Again, all reasons why preterm infants don't just go home right after they're born, right? Even if they appear somewhat healthy, you have to sort of build this up and this way they stay in the hospital longer. And also much more susceptible to, se to sepsis, right? Actually four times greater chance of developing a bacterial infection when they are preterm. And also keep in mind that apnea, okay, or apnea of prematurity, where they're much more prone to something like SIDS, okay? So, you know, we, we, we talk about these patients, guys, um, you know, depending upon where you are, you might have different transport modalities where you kind of transport them to, depending on level one, level two, things like that, right? You need, where you need a neonatologist on staff, stuff like that, to fire local guidelines when it comes to that stuff, okay, guys? Um, I want to talk a little bit here, guys, and wrap this up and talk about the resuscitation end of it, okay? Um, pretty much you're assessing and you're supporting that temperature, that airway, that breathing, circulation. And this is ongoing, okay, while you're transporting them to the hospital, okay? Um, we look talk about the heart rate, okay? If it's more than 100 beats per minute, okay, um, you're going to go ahead, you're going to dry them, you're going to warm them, right? Everything we just talked about, the temp, the airway, the circulation, right? So depending on how you do that and how you resuscitate and how you address each individual section here, okay, it's going to go by the key elements, that temp, airway, breathing, circulation, okay? That's why you're constantly reassessing it, reassessing it constantly as an ongoing um, event in the back, of, the back of that ambulance, okay? So the heart rate, more than 100 beats per minute, a lot of times with these patients, you're going to be drying them, keeping them warm, positioning their head down, suctioning their mouth, then the nose, okay? And again, transport and assess continuously, right? So what about the patients and these, these infants that are have a heart rate between 60 and 100 beats per minute? Well, a lot of times this is kind of less frequent, but what you're going to have to do with these types of patients is assist the ventilations, right? Give them the BVM, 100% oxygen, approximately 20 breaths per minute, and then reassess them again in 
in um, in a minute, okay? And see the heart rate is increasing. Now, if the heart rate is not increasing, if it's dropping below um, 60 beats per minute, okay, if you or you assess them and they're, they're their heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute, this is when you're going to be, you know, sort of more aggressive, right? You're going to be ventilating for them, um, you know, again, like we mentioned above, and you're going to be, now you're going to start doing CPR, doing those compressions, okay? You may need to do medications. You may do, me do, need to do more advanced airway management with these types of patients, okay? So it depends, again, it goes upon your protocol, goes upon you know, what your guidelines are, okay, so always note here to follow your local and current guidelines where you work, okay, what they want you, to, how they want you to treat these types of patients, how aggressive they want you to be, what you can do, what you can't do based on medical control options and stuff like that with medications with advanced airways. Some protocols are fine with you doing a basic airway and you don't have to do advanced airway management. Others require you to be more aggressive and start the advanced, way, advanced airway management earlier on these patients, okay, so follow your guidelines. This is just kind of overall idea, okay, and this is the type of stuff you're gonna see on exam. You're not gonna see protocol specific stuff on state exams and, and national exams, okay? That's more for a local, regional type exam, okay? So this is the type of stuff you'll see very, very common where if it's they're more than 100 beats per minute, it's more about suctioning, about keeping them dry, keeping them warm, right? When it gets between 60 and 80 beats per minute, this is when you're just going to go ahead and assist those ventilations, and usually that will go ahead and bring them up to 100 or more, okay? But now you're talking about when their heart rate's below 60, got to start doing CPR, got to start ventilating them, maybe medications, maybe advanced airway management. All right, guys, I hope this makes sense. Again, always continue to assess these patients, okay? The temperature, the airway, the breathing, the circulation, this is ongoing, okay? Don't let a patient like this fall through the cracks and, and get too confident because their initial heart rate is above 100. Reassess them the next time. It might be 80, might be 70, right? So just keep that in mind, monitor the patient, and keep reassessing. All right, guys, that's it for me today. That's it for this section of the EMS Quick Study Tips. Next time, we're going to get into... Um, uh, geriatrics, okay? In the meantime, engage with me, guys. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on um, on uh, uh, Instagram, stuff like that, okay? Uh, and again, guys, be sure to check out the main site at emsseo.com, okay? The SEO stands for Success, Education, and Opportunity, guys. This is everything there from exams, study help, stuff to increase your knowledge, stuff that I talk about here all the time. Okay, so go check out the site at emsseo.com. Get a lot more information there, free stuff, low-cost study guides and resources for you. Okay, videos, audios, the exam success formula I highly recommend. I highly recommend the TurboMedic personal hard drive. All this stuff, guys, is there designed to help you build your knowledge base, pass exams, increase your confidence, and be a better EMS provider. Guys, if you have some tips of your own, some suggestions, be sure to send them over to me. It's contact at emsofficehours.com. Be sure to check out emsofficehours.com if you're watching this on YouTube. And go ahead and check out the, the earlier videos of the EMS Quick Study Tips there on the Monday Minutes section of the blog. All right, guys, that's it for me. As always, Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe. <music>